Thank you so much for your giving. We do appreciate you sowing into the work of the Lord and sowing into our ministry here at Unveiled Ministries. We're good soil and we aim to do what God has called us to do. And we aim to advance the kingdom of God. We aim to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out to a greater audience and to make the word of God virtually available to those that would tune in. So now we're into our next portion. I pray that you enjoyed our first portion, our conversation piece, our dialogue. Um, I greatly love dialoguing with, uh, as I said, Dr. Brinson. Um, he's such a, a person of the word. Um, he has spiritual intellect and he knows the scriptures. So without any further ado, I would like to bring back Apostle Dr. Sylvester Brinson III as he ministers on When God Speaks. God bless you, my sister. I am humble yet excited just to think that God thought enough about little old me to, to call you and say, honor Dr. Brinson and have him to speak. I, you know, I find that very, um, it's, a, it's challenging to know that in the midst of your vicissitudes of life, God in the magnitude of his power, reaches out in the creative genius of his creativity and changes your aptitude by putting you on a new altitude so that you can utilize the magnitude of his his creative stuff that he put in you by just looking out on you so he calls whom he want to call and so i'm honored for the fact that god just woke you up and say brinson and honor him and do this and so i'm honored and i don't take this lightly i you know and when you call me and you told me and you not only that but then god said and have him speak on when god speaks i'm like god you is that my assignment you you gave me an assignment well then well what do you want me to talk about what do you want me to say and so from that three or four weeks ago, I I have been just, I took a folder and I just been writing when he say this and say that. And then I said, now God, now you know, I have 44 minutes and something to talk and I got all this stuff you gave me. And then he reminded me of the biblical text. He said, when you are called to stand before, don't give, don't give a thought about what you shall say because the Holy Spirit shall reveal it to you in that same hour. That means he's going to reveal to you what you have studied, what you know. And I have taken some time out. I've done my study. I did my research. I've asked God. I've listened to him. I've also talked to others. And let me say something about this as we move into the introduction. One of the things that I, I think we need to uh, keep in mind that a lot of people come to you and say, God spoke to me and I got me a revelation. But let me say something to that uh, is that revelation without illumination is only information. So a lot of people got information. God spoke to me. I saw this Brinson board of God spoke and I just talked to us and I just talked to us. I know I got educated and all, but you know, can I? talk to us so if i throw some ebonics out there whatever i i know what i'm doing but can i just talk to us because we in the body of christ we always say go oh, god oh i got a revelation that was deep god showed me but then we we can't understand it so revelation without without illumination so what did god say about the revelation if you don't get an illumination on your revelation of the word or whether it's logos or rhema then it's just information so a lot of times people just run into you get them there's nothing that's happening but when you get a revelation and god reveals himself and you wait long enough to understand what he is saying all knowledge and all that getting get understanding then you have illumination 
Now, once you got illumination, you can share it. So when you share your revelation because you have an illumination and you share it, then God wants you to move to a confirmation. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. There's nothing on earth that runs its course. No law, no statute, no ordinance comes into being unless there is a combination of people listening, agreeing on it. You can't even be a doctor and say you discovered some, you know, you, dis you discovered something for this disease. No, you got to get in there and join the doctor's association. They got to look at your papers and examine it. Some other people have to confirm what you say you have found. So therefore, once I get a revelation and I get illumination, I can share it with people to get a confirmation. Once I get a confirmation of my illumination from my revelation, then I can move into application. Now I can apply it because I have wisdom. Wisdom is the capacity to make application on a confirmation because your confirmation comes out of understanding of your illumination from your revelation. So if we understand those principles, then we begin to have some sense of what God is saying and how God is speaking. I believe that we must begin and as I go back to even ask where is the church and where the church goes now, you notice now because of the, of the, uh, uh, advanced technology and people have not been in the church for a while you notice some of the folk that used to hoot and I'm glad to, uh, and they had to slow down their process and you notice that more teaching has gone forward now some have got on and hooped and squalled that's a that's an art form ain't nothing wrong with that I can do it I came out of here in church but now people are listening they they want to be touched they scratch me scratch my head I Talk to me, tickle me. I want to know something because the Bible says in the last days, false prophets shall appear and they shall deceive many, even the very elect. Because people want to know, they want to hear something, they want to reason. And so, therefore, we must be able, as we begin to approach this tonight, or when God speaks, to understand from the biblical stand, as a student of the word, as a person who studied the word, I believe that when we talk, and read scripture, we must be biblically correct. Biblically correct. What did the text say? That's exegesis. We deal with eisegesis. Eisegesis is we bring a whole lot of stuff to the text and try to make the text come up with an answer when the text wasn't even written for that. So what is the text saying? What is the text actually saying? Who are the players? Who are the participants? What are the meanings? What are the principles? What is the text saying? So we have to, as the body of Christ, as we begin to understand what does God say and how does he speak, understand that we must be biblically correct in our exegesis of the text that's before us. And we must never take the, the message of the gospel, the scriptures, the logos of the gospel and culturally modify it. We have modified God's word because of the culture, because of laws. Now, remember, laws is the last thing. When we was in school and I was in my sociology class and I took anthropology from an anthropological standpoint, which is science and study of culture, they say folk ways, that's the way people do things, become more ways, which means that's an expectation. This is the way we do it. Now, we expect you to do it. And since we expect you to do it, now we're going to have a law to make you do it. So folk ways become mores and mores become law. So law is on the books come from people's morality of the way they used to do things. So any law that's been signed that does not keep up with the word of God is because some folk got together in the room, put together the law, lobbied the law. Other folk didn't come and stand against it like they should. And it ended up on the president's desk and he signed it just because he signed it into law, which is the world's kingdom. Don't mean that we have the, 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 we have the freedom to modify what the word of God said. So it ain't about what you think. It's about what God's word say. So I believe in being biblically unadulterated, an unadulterated word with a culturally unmodified word. So based upon my statement that the word of God has to be culturally unmodified, 
You can't modify because well, this is what they say and you have to be biblically correct. I want to begin to take a look at this assignment on when God speak or God is speaking. Have you heard him? God is speaking. Have you heard? Now, there's so many ways and avenues that I could approach this. So I just want to I, I, as I begin that I talk to God and seek God and, and, and say, God, which way you want me to go? And I know that there are varieties of people on this show tonight. So I'm sensitive that if some of you feel, well, Brinson didn't stay on the text. He was here, there, and here, and there, because I'm feeling you. I'm picking up. There is a variety of people on this show tonight coming from different experiences, out of different levels, coming out of different rooms. And so God is going to, I've asked God to give me the wisdom how to give a presentation so that everybody in the room, when they leave this presentation, will have some basic principles of understanding to take it to the next level. So I may not go all the way in there deep. So when you hear, it, oh, I like that, then take that and maybe preach and teach on it for six, six more days or seven more days. So the question becomes, as I begin to look at it, my paperwork is when God speaks. Now we must understand that when God speaks, that we must learn to listen. We must learn to listen for God to speak and obey it. So listening and listening to the voice of God and obeying the voice of God is a learning process. It's a learning process of hearing and interpreting God's voice. We've got to be able to hear the voice. He has an ear. Let them hear what the Spirit says unto the church. The biblical text talks about ears they hear, but they hear not. Eyes they see, but they can't see not. So, he that has an ear, you have to hear from a spiritual side in your hearing in your hearing there is three levels of hearing three hearing there is the hearing y'all hear that that's the thunder in the background it's thunder and lighting outside so that was that noise but there's a we're, and god created us we are both body so we can hear through our ear our ear we can hear the outside world we can hear the outside world. Then we have an inner ear. We have the ear of the soul. Our mind, will, and emotions, we can hear. And our soul, our soul can hear. Our mind and our emotions can hear. And then we have a spirit man. And we can hear in our spirit with our spirit. So our spirit is made late to the spiritual level and the spiritual elements of spirit. And then our soul is our inner person. So we have to decide that we can hear three ways. We can hear because we heard a noise outside. We can hear in our minds. We can hear in our soul and our minds. Or we can hear with our spirit. Or we can hear with a, multi a, a, a combination of all three. So when we look at when God speaks, how do we begin to learn how to listen and obey? Some of us, we have been ministering before the Lord. We have been in churches. We have been in ministry. Some of you all are licensed and ordained, and you don't even know the Lord, nor do you know his voice. Apostle Branson, come on now. Well, biblically speaking, isn't that the story of Samuel? Samuel ministered. It said that Samuel ministered before the Lord. That's what it said, and I want to read it because I want to make sure I get this right. Uh, I go to Samuel and the book. It's so much uh, that I could talk about, but I, I just sense God uh, saying that because so many people are saying, we well, you know the Lord spoke to me. The Lord told me this. The Lord told me that. And I be saying, the Lord told you that? He did tell you, but why are you not doing it? And so you said, big God, who God is, all powerful God, sent his word to you, and you have the nerve to disobey it or tell God, come back later, and you're not doing what God said, but you said God said it. And then everybody, God said this, God said that. I'm like, God talk to you like that all the time? Well, it look like he ought to be talking to you about your attitude while he's saying it. What else did he say? So let's look at First Samuel. When I was reading it again today, again, it stood out to me. A portion of it stood out to me. First Samuel chapter 3, um, verse 7. It said, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Comma. Now, wait a minute. Verse 1 of chapter 3 says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. 
if, if Samuel is at church, in church, having church, doing church, being church, and let me talk about that with the church piece. There are three things you got to do. You got to, uh, you, you, you got to have church. You know, Branson, we had some church on the night. Yep, we had church. Then you got to also do church. Well, you know, people always do because church also, there has to be a structure. There has to be a protocol. There has to be a strategy. There has to be a system. There has to be an organization. God's kingdom is organized. So how you do church is the organizational process of ritual and how you do what you do called church. Then have church is the activity of the experience of having church. And then there is being church. That is being the body of Christ. That is being the gospel. That is healing the sick and casting out devils and loving each other. That's being church. So you have church, you do church, and you be church. All of that is a part of church. Uh, and it says, and so Samuel, was, he was what? He was uh, in church. By waiting and ministering in the Lord. And he was doing church because he was working as an administrative assistant to Eli, which was the priest. And the structure of the priesthood was the door. So he was doing church, he was having church, but he didn't know how to be. Because it said he did not know the Lord. What? Samuel in the temple from a child? That's all he knew was church. You, I'm a P. I'm a what? PK. I'm a preacher. I know it's church. I've been church. I've been, but you don't know. That he didn't know the Lord. He didn't know the voice of the Lord. He had to be trained. God called him three times, and he went to other voices. So let's look at it. So when God speaks, we must learn to listen and obey. That's a principle. Remember that. If you don't learn to listen and obey God's voice, why is God speaking to you? It's a learning process of hearing and interpreting God's word. So now let's look at some ways. I, I put about 13 ways that I'm just going to give it to you briefly because there's so much I want to give. So let's, let's look at some ways God speaks. Number one, through scriptures or the biblical texts. Number two, through the and the arts. Number three, through people. Intimate relationships, etc. Number four, God speaks through repeated instruction. Sometimes God has told you two to three times. You, I some told me, and every time I go down the street, some tell I keep. That's God trying to talk to you. He repeats himself two times. Continue all this, Samuel, because you don't know it, and sometimes you have to learn, and sometimes. I have to tell you something two or three times before you learn how to obey. It's almost like a parent. You say, sit down, shut up, don't do this, come here, call me, when you come in, you got to beg somebody and plead with some. And sometimes God's mercy been doing that to some of us. Repeated instruction, talks, warnings, directions. And sometimes God speaks to you, you just bust out the laugh and he'll make you laugh. God also speaks through circumstances. He speaks through your circumstance and he speaks through others' circumstance. He speaks dreams. Number seven, he's through visions. Number eight, the Holy Spirit is his power of voice. The Holy Spirit reveals, it confirms, it tugs. And then, and then when you're responding of uh, listening and hearing the Holy Spirit, you've got to grow and have a sense of discernment. So the Holy Spirit, he speaks to us through prayer. Prayer is talking to God and getting an answer. Sometimes an answer may be no answer, but it's still an answer. He speaks through audible voice. He speaks through peace and quiet. A quiet spirit, a quiet mind. A still small voice. Or as they say it in the world, the song, the sounds of silence. Sometimes he said, be still and know that I'm gone. Just be quiet. Shut up. Just be quiet. And as you be quiet, in the quietness and the stillness, God speaks. He speaks through supernatural manifestations of signs, wonders, and miracles. So, and some of you all can take that list and go on and on and on and on. So when God speaks, let me say this. This is a principle. 
when God speaks, he creates according to his will. God speaks according to, and when God speaks, he creates according to his will. His word become a creative energy that creates and set in motion whatever he speaks. Oh, I, I, you know, it was like the spirit of God, the presence of God enters the atmosphere, does an assessment, and then God speaks. It said, and the earth was out form and void and darkness covered, and the spirit of God hovered over the waters. That was the first song of Gary. You know, a baby in the womb, they put that machine on you, and based upon the sound, they see the shape of the baby in the womb. God's spirit over the waters begin to see that the earth was now forming void in the middle of the darkness god spoke and said let there be light and the light shine it and the darkness said well what happened he said he didn't create light he said let light be some of y'all some things god don't create in you god said let what's in you be god speaks into you sometimes and speak into you out of you and draw out of you to be what you already are sometimes in our churches we always want people to become you got to become a no god said be it as you be what i call you to be as you be that i spoken to you to be you become the becoming is the maturing process of being you cannot be in you cannot be a being until you be I have to be in it to be in to become. So I have to become. Become is the maturation process of my being. So in the fivefold ministry, he said he came, he gave some to be. Not uh, I got to kiss this one and got to kiss that one, and I got to know. Gifts have been given you to be. Be it, work it, grow it, but listen to how I speak to you and how I lead you. So let's look at that. That's important when God speaks. So I want to go uh, to first to Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 11. You want to write that down. I want to do exegesis on this from the understanding of when God speaks, because this was so clear to me. I asked God to give me something different. So Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 through 11, because I know that most of us, we, a lot of us, we're believers in the body of Christ. And you've heard a lot of preaching and teaching on this subject, when God speaks. So there's no need to me getting up and repeating the same stuff. I want to give you something else different. Isaiah chapter 55, listen to verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now this is this is deep, but verse 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and return it not thither, but water the earth, listen to this, and make it it bring forth and bud. So you saying the water make it bring forth. It didn't ask the water to say, excuse me, do you mind if I get you wet? No, no, you're going to get wet. And something about my wetness is going to make what's in you to bud. There's some seeds in you, but it can't happen until I make you wet. Uh-oh, God's going to speak and make you wet. And so, no, and then says, and make it bring forth and bud. That it may give seed to the soil and bread to the ear. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. When God speaks, look what he said. The word that goes forth out of my mouth is like the rain and the snow that makes the earth bud. And guarantee that you have seed and also bread. It said, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. Look, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. So when you say God spoke to you, you better be sure that God spoke, because if he spoke, his word ain't going to return to him void. So if God spoke and said this and this and that and that, and you're not doing it, you're in trouble because the word is going to put you on arrest. The word is going to do you. 
the word is not going to come back to heaven and say, well, I talked to Brother Brinson and he didn't want to do what you told him to do. No, the word ain't going to say that. The word is going to say, you sent me and you told Brother Brinson, I want him to preach. I want him to move. You told Brother Brinson, I need him to get up and relocate and go move to Georgia. And, and, and I just came back to let you know that it, it, it took me uh, about 20 days, but he's in Georgia now. And so God said, well, why you say that word? What do you have to do? He said, well, I, I went down and you told me, you told me to tell him to get to Georgia. But at the same time, you told me that your word, word said, I can't return to you for nothing. And you said it was going to accomplish what you please. So your plea, your pleasure was for him to go to Georgia. And you said it was going to prosper in the thing where into you said it. So when he go to Georgia, he ain't going to be poor. He's going to prosper. But when I told him to go to Georgia, he didn't want to go. So what, what did you do? Well, you know, I just let his house burn down. I burned his house down. I tore up his car. And then, you know, I got him fired from his job. And then, and then I set it up for a job to, so for him to get a friend. And after being a friend, somebody met him that had a business in Georgia. And they invited him. And he ended up moving down to Georgia. And I gave, and I let him prosper. I let him get a new house. And now he's making more than he had before because I'm worried. I'm worried. You released me and you told me to tell Brinson to get to Georgia and he didn't want to go. When I burn up Ziglag, I burnt down his Ziglag because David, I had to burn your Ziglag down because the next day you're going to be the king of Israel. So what you need with a Ziglag? Some of y'all got Ziglags hanging around you. God said, I'm going to burn down your Ziglag because you're getting ready to do something else and you hold it on. I, my word shall not return to me void. You say God told me. I heard God said he can it and you're not doing it you're in trouble with the word because the word is sharp and it'll cut you you can't sneak and hide what i don't want to know the word said you're gonna do it ask jonah are you are you all oh, snap you're gonna do this if i have to go and create a fish to swallow you up and let you breathe underground with no air tank and wrap seaweed around your head in a belly and don't let the digestive juices chew you up and let the, the, bed, the fish go down and just sit in the bottom until you repent. Then I'm going to send you on a submarine wide, ride all the way to Nineveh, Nineveh and spit you out. And when I spit you out, your mansion going to be double. He entered to a, a three days journey and he preached one day, three days worth of work. And the whole city came. Some of you all, you under arrest by the word. Because when God speaks, his word don't return. It makes things happen. His word is a creative genius. That principle, when God speaks, he creates according to his own. Now, Brinson, uh, I, 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 you got to help me understand that. So I know how this is to the word. So the, 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 the church at Corinth, they had that problem. So let's see. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 10. Let's look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 10. See, I just don't want to give you my philosophy. I want to stay with the biblical text. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 10. Let's see what it says. It says this, 14, 14 verse 10. Paul writes to the church at Corinth and he said, There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. And none of them is without significance. Paul tells the church at Corinth, there's a lot of voices out in the world. A lot of voices out here, and all of them are significant. Now let's look at it. We always already talked about the ways God speaks. But the biblical text said, my sheep know my voice. So now, how do you know the voice of God when he speaks in the variety of ways he speaks? How are you clear that in the midst of the so many kinds of voices, how do we understand that? So what we got to understand is that the voice, voices are, uh, we are influenced more or less by voices. Who you are and what you're going through in life, voices will influence you. So there are voices in the earth. So now let's look at, I, I put down 13 voices, types of voices. Uh, and uh, so let's look at voices. Voices come to influence your purpose and your destiny. 
Now, once you start going into the process of learning to hear and listen to God's voice, part of the process of hearing and interpreting God's word when he speaks is to understand his voice and the, the voice says, well, God talked to me. God told me. Did God really tell you that? Was that really God's voice or was it one of the other voices? Now, let's take a look. Let's do an inventory right quick. I, I had some time. I wrote down about 13 different voices. Let's look at it. Let's see. There's a voice of God that speaks the mind of God, the spirit of truth. That shall come to you and show you all things the comfort of the Holy Spirit. That's the voice of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 4 through 8. There's the voice of the flesh. The voice of the flesh is an expression of your desires and your feelings. So sometimes you have desire and so much your feeling, your desire and your feeling to talk to you, and you say, God said it. No, it wasn't the one God. You, 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 that was your feeling. You felt like it. God just told me to slap him. No, you felt like slapping him. <laughs> your desires and your feelings, the carnal mind. The carnal mind can't be something. So in my mind, I heard God. Well, could it have been the voice of your flesh? Number three, there's a voice of the mind. God has given us the capacity to think like him. We have a thought process. We have a thought process and the capacity to reason. We can think and reason. A plus B for C and because it is. And so sometimes we, we, we mistake the voice of God from the voice of our mind. Well, Brinson, it just makes sense. So I heard God and you know I heard God because you know God just helped me to see that it made sense. Well, it was the voice of your mind through your thought process. You processed some issues and reasoning through some things. But that was through your knowledge and it wasn't God's knowledge. So now you have also number four, the voice of the devil or the voice of Satan. Satan or the voice of Satan always trying to lead you the wrong and to confuse you, to get off track. The voice of Satan always tempts you and deals with your purpose and destiny. Jesus was led in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And the voice of the devil of Satan came to him to tempt him in three areas of his life. He was the son of God. He said, if thou be the son of God. Oh, say, he, Satan came into the garden and said, yeah. oh, well, you know, he, didn't God say not eat off the tree? Well, you shall not surely die. And he had a theological, biblical discussion, he had a theological discussion with Eve and God has said, hallelujah, thank you, hallelujah. And then he said, now, Eve, let's think about it. Let's reason through this. And before you know it, she and Adam had ate off the fruit and they had a fruit salad from the fruit off the tree they weren't supposed to. Then there's the voice of the prophet. The voice of the prophet. That is either the false prophet or the true prophet because the Bible says there may be many false prophets. So remember, Elijah, his prophet, and the prophets of Baal. So he had to say, well, which prophet can send, send, send the fire? So there are the voice of the prophet. Then there's the voice of um, someone you hold in respect or high esteem, a leader, a pastor, or a bishop, or somebody important in your life, a life coach, a therapist, somebody you trust. There's a voice that they talk to. They can talk to you in a certain kind of way and you can hear their voice. And sometimes if you're not careful, you would think and put that voice and say, well, God spoke to them and that was no, 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 no. That was what they said. That was their opinion. Then there's the voice of your friends. There's the voice of your parents, your mama. Boy, my mama said it. God, my, my mama confirmed it. My, my daddy confirmed it, my auntie or your family members, my brothers and sisters. Number nine, there's the voice of your spirit. Your own spirit can talk. Well, I heard the Holy Spirit. No, that was a spirit. The spirit came to me and I felt it. Listen, I felt it in my spirit. Well, your spirit or the Holy Spirit talking to your spirit? Which one? Then there's the voice of your spouse or your significant other. Somebody you really intimate in because we have certain people, they can say certain things to us and it's like the voice of God. Woo! God said it. 
And the, the enemy can use that. And so, and sometimes the voice makes sense. It's not a negative, but it was a voice, but it was not, and it made sense, but it was not within the timing of what God said. It was not in God's chronological order, nor God's kairos order for you. Then there's the voice of your own will. Sometimes, because you just want to do something so bad, you'll hear yourself telling you, well, you need to go ahead and do it. You, you know you owe yourself. Well, you know the Lord, oh, hallelujah, the Lord told me to go ahead and do this. And I just felt that the Lord just wanted me to do that. And really, if you really didn't, the Lord didn't tell you that. Yo, you just want to do it so bad that you heard your own will tell you, go and do that, girl, bro, dog. Go ahead. Then, number 13, you can have a voice of any of the mixtures above. It can be a little of this. Sometimes you can hear God's voice and mix it with some other voice. Or sometimes you get voices all mixed up. So now, as we understand that, that voices come to influence your purpose and your destiny. And we are all influenced more or less by one or two or all of the voices or above or bits and pieces. So who are you? What's going on in your life? Because some of that has something to do with you hearing from God. So now, what we have to understand when we go to Scripture to hear the voice of God through Scripture is Second Timothy chapter three and verse sixteen says all Scripture. So if you're gonna read the Word of God, you can't you can't mess up the Word. You can't uh, 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 you can't alter God's Word. You can't culturally modify God's Word because all Scripture that you come in contact with. That God, God is trying to do, he's trying to motivate you, he's trying to inspire you, he's uh, trying to confirm something, or he's trying to instruct you concerning what you're supposed to do for your life. What particular time of your life, in the particular time of your life, God is going to, he's going to be instructing you. So you're given by inspiration of God. The scriptures are given by inspiration and a prophet for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, to correct you, to, to challenge you, to give you some instructions on the right way you should go. So God bears witness to his word. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. You got to bear witness to his word. When God speaks. Oh, I had so much, uh, you know. So we have to be able to discern God's voice from our own voice and from all them other voices. We got to be, become familiar with God's character. And sometimes you got to ask questions. And sometimes you just be, but it's got, you got to learn. You got to learn. That's why I said earlier, you got to learn to know that uh, we got to learn how to hear and interpret God's voice. We got to come become familiar. Now, also remember this principle. God can speak at any time to anyone in whatever way he chooses. Well, God can't use him. God can speak. Hey, what God do? No, 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 no. God can speak at any time. Well, God, this is not a good time. Can you call me back? God said, no, no, no. Well, God, you know, I just got a job and I just got on this job. So I know you ain't telling me to move and relocate. So God, can you come back next month and let me do this? And that? So we start by what you did. Well, then you must then know. So you have to understand that the spirit of God, he searches. He knows. So God speaks to anyone that he wants to. He brings out a no, a search to enlighten, to open, to recreate, to examine, to strengthen, to establish a heart. Uh, he listens to that. So we understand the difference between two things. God's speaking. He either speaks through his logos or through his rhema. The love of spoken word. It's referred to revelation received by what the Holy Ghost Spirit. The Logos is the general word of God. The everyday word of God through the scriptures of God speaking to you. His word, his Logos, the Logos of God is his word. How you go, how you come. That's Logos. Now, Rhema, Rhema, I said Logos is the general word of God that communicates his ability, your ability to do something, your general life, his wish, his purpose, and his destiny. But a rhema is a spoken word out of the Logos. Uh, but a rhema word is a word for now. A rhema word tells you how. Who, what, when, where, and how is the rhema word. The Logos word is the what. 
This is what I want you to do. I know God. Now all of a sudden you get a rhema. I know God just spoke to me. He showed me what to do, when to go, where to go. That's a rhema word. But a rhema word must always be in alignment with a Logos word. When Logos and rhema ain't in alignment, God ain't speaking. No, 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 no. Logos is God. God active in his creation. God active in his revelation. God active in redemption. So the Logos word of God is going to be doing two, one to three things. One of three things. It's going to be creating. It's going to be revealing for you to get illumination and confirmation for your application. Or it's going to be redeeming and restoring, putting you back together. So Jesus is that word. In the beginning was the word, Jesus, the word of God. So Logos and Rhema are always in alignment with one another. Logos. So what is Logos, for example? We, we use it like this. Logos, Logos is the river. Logos, say that. Say, Logos is Lake Michigan, okay? For those are here. Logos would be Lake Michigan or Logos would be the well of water. Rhema is the bowl that came, the bowl of water that came from the water. So if I would go out there and look at Lake Michigan, I said, boy, that's a Oh, you can talk about all the things that Lake Richard can do, but now specifically in the Logos of what God wants you, it's a specific for everything there's a time a season, a purpose what is specific directive that's the rhema so my, so my bowl of water coming out of the Lake Michigan water out of the well of water is the rhema so it comes out of those and it's always a line so therefore we must understand Logos is the entire while Rhema is one part of the operation. Well, Preston, you got the next step. Okay, let's go to music. From the piano, all the keys on the piano will be called that Logos. All the keys is Logos. Now you take your finger and hit one key. That's a Rhema. That's one sound out of the capacities of a variety of sounds. So out Rhema comes out of Logos. So you can go to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, and understand that. So I wanted to give that information to you about that for when God speaks, but there's so many other capacities and so much stuff I had not covered that I want you to understand that God is speaking. God is speaking and God has spoken. That's why I like the song, Let the Church Say Amen. So be it, let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church, do you have an amen to the God of what God has said? When God speaks, something will happen. So you that are out here saying, God told me, God spoke to me, I'm looking for what's going to happen, what you going to do. How you going to obey? Because when God speaks, his word organizes the process to accomplish what he said. So now the question is, are you ready when God speaks, huh. some of y'all, when God speaks to me, you, you, based upon how you live and what you do, you haven't consecrated or sanctified yourself. God will speak through your mess to you, sure will. But when He speaks through your mess to you in your mess, the mess of the word that He speaks is life. It's going to restructure your mess and you're going to come out washed. Huh? Can you take His presence? Uh, well, you know, God is always speaking to me. Well, you know, you know, God don't speak without his presence. When God speaks, his presence shows up. Uh, well, you know, anytime God speaks, his presence shows up. So the question is for you all that's saying God speak, can you take the presence? Can you take, take the presence? Um, the presence, when you hear God speak, you run from the presence. Well, I want God to speak, but I don't want to feel the anointing. I don't want the presence. Can you speak with me without the presence? Can you speak to me without all that other stuff? No, no, that, that's what happened. And so it says, and in the cool of the day, uh, uh, Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord walking. In the cool of the day, the voice of the Lord come walking in the garden, and they hid themselves from the presence. Some of you all hear God's voice walking. But you run from the presence. You don't want to be arrested. But you can run all the way. You you got to. And they hid themselves from the presence. The presence and the voice got together and said, where are you? And, and they found them through GPS, divine GPS. And you still got what's coming. So remember that. God's word. 
God's word, God's word, God's word. So what I'm challenging you as we close here is that we got to take the details out of the detail. Well, God spoke, but I'm waiting for him to say this and say that. And he got to give me this and give me that, you know, as Dr. Martin Luther King said, caught up in the paralysis of analysis. I, I'm so preoccupied with the detail. No, no, no. Take the details out of the detail. Remove the decimal point. Dreams, live, and all that stuff. Remove all the decimal points and get the message from the detail and move forward. Well, now, when I got and spoke enough, move and act and do what God told you, but I'm still waiting for another confirming word. Well, well, I thought he confirmed, but I know, but I'm waiting for another. How many feces you going to put out? Take the detail out. The mystery. The mystery. The mystery of what God so So as we close today, when God speaks, he creates according to his will. He asks questions. He gives directives. Uh, he gives instruction, he gives celebrations, he gives promises, he names stuff, he defines stuff, and all through the scripture, he gives counsel, he, gives, he speaks to his dreams and visions, and also he moves forward, and he also stands toward and honor his word. So, as I close on the day, I want you to know that God's word shall not return unto him void. It shall accomplish what he said. So if God said it, he has the power to do it. Stop trying to do God's job. If God told you, act. If God said it, believe. Remember, learning to hear and understand the voice of God is a process. Life is a journey and not a sprint. Hearing the voice of God is a journey, is a journey. As you listen and obey it, you grow, you mature. Remember, there are many voices. But if the voice of the Lord said, uh, you know, uh, Isaac, <laughs> Abraham, you're going to have a baby. It got Sarah pregnant, didn't it? She can laugh all she wants to. But the word said, you're going to get pregnant because I say. So what is God saying to you as you leave this place on today? Remember, learn to hear God's voice. Remember, there are a lot of voices and a lot of ways God speaks. But when God speaks, he creates. Let him create something in you.